Hi, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Let's get right into it, Jim. Uh, we'll start where we normally do with the Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton Sun ran a front page article, Jim, about Taylor Hall's nickname being Halsey. That's some, well, two things some pretty lazy <laughs> nicknaming right there, and some pretty lazy <laughs> journalism to run that on the front page. Uh, my Who are we to judge? You know, of course, <laughs> speaking of lazy journalism, we're three days late on our blog, but don't worry about that. Yeah, let's just move on. <laughs> Carry on. My favorite Oiler nickname over the past two decades has got to be my boy Jason Smith and his nickname Gator. What do you think? That's a good one. I don't think a Halsey's that bad. No. I mean, there already is a Halsey, obviously. Exactly. It's not but very inventive. Someone's trying to say, oh, they're, all the other nicknames are creative, like uh, Ebbs, <laughs> Pens, Cogs, boy, Gags. That's, that's tough. Yeah. My, I'd say my favorite one of all time would probably Mr. Hockey. Yeah, Mr. That's Hockey. Good, yeah. Right? Gordy Howe himself, I like that. Super Mario. Yeah, that's good Not too. Bad. Yeah, went, went back to the 80s too, I like yeah. that. Yeah, oh yeah. There's, there's some good ones there's out there. Good I don't know, I, I, could you think of one for Halsey? I, <laughs> the, the, the Taylornator? <laughs> yeah, the, well, the yeah. Taylornator works. There we go. I, I don't know, I just think like these people are paid a lot of money. How, how about one, how, how about Of Fame? Oh. Of fame? Hall of Fame. Oh, there. See, yeah. now I think that's what we're going to call him for the rest of <laughs> mankind. Taylor Hall of Fame shoots and scores! There you go. I like it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're going to move on. Uh, breaking news. Well, breaking news for us. Uh, Daryl Sutter steps down as the general manager of the Calgary Flames. He's been there since 2003. Brought in his brother Brent as uh, the coach and his other brother Dwayne as the director of uh, player personnel. My thoughts, Jim. I mean, I thought when they brought in... Uh, especially Brent to coach. I thought that that was how they were going to win. I thought those yeah. guys are like great minds in hockey. I thought that was it for sure. But then they've done nothing. They they're the oldest team in hockey and they're at the top of the uh, the salary cap. What happened? Yeah, they've they've been a disappointment, a big disappointment. which could not be better news for us out here <laughs> yeah, in the absolutely. city of champions. No, love that. But still, yeah, like, it's it's crazy. I, I guess he just wasn't happy with the on ice product. But then again, is he ever happy? <laughs> Those are some unhappy looking guys. I mean, they just but, had Christmas, so, you know, you could just tell it. They'd be just, just bored or whatever the whole yeah, time. Yeah, there's, there's been some kind of, some rumors that this might happen. Yeah. But, uh, does it change anything? I don't know. Um, it's interesting, though. Does Brent get fired as a coach here next? That's a tough one. It's not I, I say no. No, oh, yeah. Because the assistant GM came in and, and he's going to take over the reins. Maybe he doesn't shake it up for the first little while. Yeah, you know? I mean, they haven't been that bad. They're not like the New York Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> no one's that bad. But I think maybe a couple of changes in that team could be on the, could be on the upswing. Nice. I certainly hope not. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't we don't want to see anything like that. Yeah. You guys feel free to, to, to still suck. You go right ahead. That's right. <laughs> um, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, their goaltender, Chris Osgood, picked up his career win number 400 this past week. Uh, is he Hockey Hall of Fame material, Jim? No, Jeff. Yeah, I've had go. countless arguments with people about this. Yeah, a lot of them with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> this is going to be one more. You know what? Yeah. And I think with Chris Osgood, lots of people will say, oh, no, he's just, a, he's just a bad goalie on a good team or a medium goalie on a good team. You don't get 400 wins by mistake. 50 shutouts, three Stanley Cups, second goalie in the history of the NHL to win a Stanley Cup as a starter 10 years apart. Yep. Uh, oh, sorry, who was the other one there? Oh, Terry Sancho. Yeah, that's, that's some pretty, pretty, pretty good company yeah, to, be, uh, to be in there. Tenth guy all time to win 400 games. Of those other nine players, six are in the Hall of Fame. One is Martin Brodeur, so seven, seven are in the Hall of Fame. The other two, Curtis Joseph, never won a cup. Ed Belfour should be considered. I just, I, I don't see how you can argue with those numbers. I think those numbers are good, Jim. I agree. And I think he's a good goaltender. Hall of Fame material? I don't know. Yes, three Stanley Cups. No uh, Memorial Cup. No uh, gold medal in an Olympics. No gold medal World Junior Championship. I think these days, uh, I think you need a little more than Stanley Cups. Mind you, he's still got three Stanley Cups. You know Cups. why he hasn't won a World Championship? Because he's in the playoffs every year. <laughs> That's right. That's another thing. Yeah. I, Jeff. I, I, just, I just think he's never been... He's never been picked to, to be an Olympic goaltender, and that's because, like you like you say, I mean, he's flown under the radar completely. Canada's a very deep, deep, it's deep true. country. And I don't think not being an Olympic goaltender should be held against him. In ter We're talking about 400 career wins. He's done it in 118 or so games less than Grant Fuhr. Yeah, who which is... Which I think is something worth noting. A hockey Hall of Fame he's goaltender. Got, he's got more wins than most of the goalies in the Hall of Fame. And I... 
yeah, Nick Lidstrom has been in front of him for all these years, but Nick Lidstrom isn't standing at the top of the crease blocking every shot. True. Chris Osgood, his 400th win, for example, he faced 49 shots. The Red Wings give up an average of about 28 shots over the past few seasons, probably around there for the, the entire time he's been with the team. A bad goaltender will not win games facing 30 shots a night. It just, it does, it's not how it works. I don't know, I just think those 30 shots are not the same 30 shots that an Oiler goaltender goal over that same 10 or 15 year span is facing. I think they're, they're easier shots because of the team uh, Chris has had in front okay, of Okay, so what you're saying is, if you're a goalie on a good team, you don't deserve the uh, the credit for the accolades and accomplishments you, you rack no, up. No, I'm just saying you deserve that is part what you're of saying. it. I'm saying you deserve part of it. 400 and you're wins. just sleep Oh, well, he's on a good team. 50 shutouts. Well, he's on uh, a good 50 team. 50 shutouts or something Three else. Three Stanley Cups. Well, he's on a good team. I just don't know if he's that Hall of Fame material. I don't think. I think another thing is he's not flashy, and that maybe you know that's a good thing for him. He's a solid goaltender, but I don't think that's going to get you your votes from the uh, Hall of Fame uh, committee. 400 wins, three Stanley Cups. I don't know. I don't know what you can really argue. Uh, uh, a playoff career goals against average of 209. Yeah. Six 30 win seasons. And only one of five goaltenders to actually shoot a puck into That's an opposing right. net and get a but it, But if you goal. put it, if you put his numbers next to other guys that are in the hall, Grant Fear is a great example. He's got as good or better numbers. Fear has more Stanley Cups and a Vezina Trophy. And Fear was a good goaltender on a good team. And, and he's the best example because yeah. he played on arguably one of the best teams ever assembled. Agreed. You know, without without the Gretzkys and the Messiers, is Fira a Hall of Fame goaltender? Probably not. Do people hold that against him? Nope. No. And neither should they hold For it against For some reason, Osgood. people hate Osgood. I don't think hate. People hate on Osgood. I don't hate it. I hate on Osgood. Hate on okay, Osgood constantly, more than anybody else. That's true. He's the most hated on goaltender to have 400 <laughs> wins. There you go. Well, we'd like to know what you think, so why don't you uh, text us or get us get us uh, some information, comment on our blog, uh, or hit us up on Twitter, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, you know... We'll argue back. Don't you worry. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> All right, moving on, we have uh, our Gabbies for this week. Uh, so this is a good and bad by you, so we want you to bring up something, and we'll put it up on uh, on our 15 minutes. We'll give you your 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so on the good side, Jim, is uh, UConn women uh, win... Their 89th straight game, um, and that beats the UCLA, UCLA men's streak. Uh, so they've got the most uh, most wins of any team it's ever. It's impressive. Yeah, it's incredibly impressive. Uh, Maya Moore's playing on that team. It's played for the past three years. She's averaging over 18 points a game. She's one of the keys to that. What do you think about that it's, streak? It's outstanding. Yeah, it is. Isn't and it? it's uh, the the coach the coach of UConn went off about the sexist attitudes of some yeah. reporters who say that they're it's only paying it. attention because they don't want them to beat a men's record. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah, absolutely. And good for them. Ryan Whitney uh, gets uh, from the Edmonton Oilers gets his first goal after getting 24 assists. Uh, you know, what do you think? Little, little 30 some games? Yeah. Lots of tip-ins. Lots of <laughs> exactly. Finally gets one, then gets another one. Good for him, eh? And the third on our good list has got to be Santa. You know, Santa, yeah. S- Santa Claus had a good uh, good time. You know, so uh, You're my boy Santa. Absolutely. On the bad side of things, uh, Rex Ryan and the the, the Jets uh, of the NFL are just they're having a bad time. They're having Santa. a tough time putting their best foot. Forward. Oh, Rex yeah. Ryan got caught up in a foot fetish video scandal. Yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. Oh, uh, there no it is idea. again. You know, yeah. and just after the the line of many things that have gone on with the Jets this year, they still make the playoffs. What do you think? Yeah. Well, it's not really as bad as the other controversies, but it's embarrassing. It's way more poor embarrassing guy. I feel than bad for him. Like, okay. uh, One more thing, you know. Oh, poor Rex Ryan. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, so the weather is on our bad side because snow has been messing with uh, European soccer. It's been messing with NFL. It's been messing up NHL games. Uh, there was a Leafs Devils game that uh, they said were had fifty three hundred fans in the stands, which uh, yeah, I don't you could think. count them with. You can count them just... Exactly. Probably and 500. The New York Islanders actually asked the NHL to postpone a game, and the NHL's like, no. Yeah, I heard they also asked to have the rest of their season postponed oh, yeah? due to poor results. But <laughs> again, the NHL said, I'm sorry, fellas. The NHL, they're hard, man. They're hard. Uh, as well on our bad side is the fans uh, <laughs> brawled with each other and with the police before a Swedish Elite League game last week. I mean, what has come with fans? We see this in I, Europe all the time. 
<laughs> there's been brawls all over oh, the place no the kidding. last couple of weeks. KHL, UK Elite League, all over. Lingerie football. <laughs> I, I know, what's that with one. that? <laughs> uh, there, uh, there was a massive NLL preseason brawl. People just, they're in the fighting mood no these kidding. days. No kidding, it must be the economic like downturn it. or something. Yeah, like yeah, it's the recession. <laughs> We're going to blame this on the recession Exactly, too. they're angry people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to move on to our quick hits now. Um, Michael Vick uh, was asked to pick his MVP candidate and chose, surprise, surprise, himself. Uh, you know, which I actually like, Jim, because, you know, Michael Vick, he's, he's having a heck of a year right now. Absolutely. Who's your uh, NFL MVP this far through the season? I think when it comes down to it, it's going to be Tom Brady. Yeah. And it's going to be Michael Vick. Absolutely. And whichever... Tom Brady's having an unreal season, but so is Vic. Yeah. They're having kind of unreal seasons in their own ways. Um, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Brady, like Brady's just kind of a model of consistency. And do Mike, you reward that? I like that. Yeah, and Michael Vick is a model of uh, taking advantage of a second chance. Well, and, and he's done the best second chance that I've seen in, in years in all of pro sports, you know? like, And he's saying all the right things, doing all the right things, except for, you know, he said himself is the well MVP. he said he said oh you kind of put me on the spot here uh, i'll take myself yeah i wonder if the eagles are upset that they traded donovan McNabb, mm. who is benched for the yeah, final exactly. three of the season probably not and might be released by the team i like it uh the world junior championships are on this year in hockey uh my favorite time of year and uh the team canada won their first game against the russians uh who wins the gold medal i just pray to santa that it's that it's Canada. Absolutely. I love, just like you, I love this time of year. I yeah. can think of years past sitting in front of the TV watching. Uh, what I love most about the tournament is that in three years from now, three, four, five years from now, some of these guys on the team right now are going to be the the Richards, the Crosby. Absolutely. The, and I, I think that's the best. Oh, totally. Like it's, just, it's so much fun to watch. World Junior Championship for me is, is uh, I don't watch a whole lot of junior hockey, and so what I like to do is I get to, you know, you get familiar with this. I mean, this is the first place I knew about John Tavares, you know, and then yeah. you see him uh, you see him playing in the NHL just all throughout the years, you know, and you look back at games 10, 15 years ago, the, the brawl against the Russians, and you oh, see, yeah. you know, Luke Richardson and, and Brendan Shanahan and Theron yeah. Fleury there. You it's know, you, just, you love to see these yeah. guys who are amazing players back when they – we're just trying to try out, you know. I, I just absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, my pick for my pick has got to be. I think it's going to be USA Canada final, and Canada's going to win it on uh, USA home soil. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely, gotta love it. Take that, US. <laughs> Dwayne, they, they needed overtime in their first game yeah, to, exactly. to get out of the it. So. The Canadians didn't. Uh, Dwayne Rolison is named NHL's first star of the week. Uh, he led in seven goals that night, but he had 45 shots against. Is this a guy who could end up on the playoff? 45 saves. Well, saves. Sorry, yeah, 45 yeah, saves. Over 50 shots yeah, Exactly. Against. Uh, is this a guy who could be, uh, on the trade block come, uh, trade deadline? I think any team that might be unsure about their goaltending situation should make an offer for Dwayne Rolison. And I think the New York Islanders, if they're smart, will take any half decent deal because Dwayne Rollison, well, we saw it in Edmonton. He's capable of stealing games. He's old, but he's only got half the miles That's on right. like he was saying. Yeah. But I couldn't believe that. Oh, man. He's named the first star, and then the same day he lets in seven goals. Wow. Then I look at the shots, and I was like, yeah, oh, over 50 man. shots. All right, good for him. That's pretty good. I, you know, I can't think of any other goaltender who, who's in that position. You know, people are even talking about maybe Martin Brodeur yeah. being on the training block, but I'm, I'm a little unsure about Brodeur right now. Yeah, we'll see how it if goes. If the Olympics were this year, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe give Chris Osgood a call. Well, <laughs> I want to move on here, Jim, because I really want to get this part in. The governor of Pennsylvania says the U.S. is a, a nation of wusses because the NHL moved Philly's game against Minnesota to Tuesday, first time in something like 54 years because of the snow. I want to get this quote right here. He says, uh, the Chinese are kicking our butt in everything. If this was China, do you think the Chinese would have uh, called off the game? People would have been marching down, I like that, marching mm. in China, into the stadium, and they would, have, <laughs> they would have walked, and they would have been doing calculus on the, on the way down. What do you think about that quote? Not only would the Chinese not cancel a football game, they would also do hard math while not doing so. Oh, I love it. That's touchdown. It's good. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, our 15 minutes of fame are up for this week. Join us again next time when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Thanks for watching.